Hello, everyone. Thank you. I'm Ali Asaria. I want to talk to you about um, the biggest thing that I learned last year that's kind of affected the entire purpose of the company that I work at right now. So let me tell you a little bit about that. Uh, let me make sure the slides are working. Oh, it's working. Okay. So the talk, the talk is about the future of work. When I, when I talk about work, I, I'm talking about that thing that 150 million people in North America do every day when they go in to a place. Um, a lot of the discussion about work is about how it's being disrupted, right? How everything's going to change and how all jobs are going to be gone. Roy kind of hinted at that. People talk about things about robotics, right? This is Baxter. You actually program Baxter by moving his arms around. You don't write any software, and he just learns what you just showed, showed him to do. And that face is really creepy. Um, <laughs> this is an Amazon warehouse with Kiva robots. If you ever have the chance to go in them, you can't actually go in that area because they don't know people are there. They'll literally like kill you. They can't tell you. Uh, they can't tell the difference between a human and the floor. Um, but this is like this is changing everything, right? I, I, well, that's it. This was like the thing we think about all the time. And then, of course, AI, right? This this scary woman who uh, drives cars. Um, I I, <laughs> I used to. I, I, I used to work at a company called, called BlackBerry. I, I was well known for making a game called Brick Breaker. When I was young, people would get excited when I said that. Now when I say it, people are like, that thing that my grandfather played. Um, <laughs> And then I started a company, I, I left RIM pretty quickly. I, I started a company called Well.ca, um, and Well.ca is a big e-commerce company. I spent a lot of time thinking about how to disrupt retail and, and make my father's business ruined forever, even though he worked his whole life as a pharmacist. Um, and then I, we started a company called Tulip Retail, and I, I want to tell you what, what we learned about the future of work. When we started Tulip, we didn't know what we were going to do. We were 15 engineers who knew retail software really well. We did things like this virtual wall. Um, the lesson was the future of retail is not QR codes. Um, but the, we didn't really know. We just knew we knew how to write good software, and we didn't really know what the future of shopping was going to be like. The story of Tulip was we went out and we talked to big retailers. So I went out to the best retailers that I knew, some of who, um, whom used to be competitors to Well.ca, and Toys R Us Canada was nice enough to let us in their offices, and they said, what are you doing, Ali? The most important thing you could do right now isn't put kiosks up in our stores or put up a wall with products. We have all of these staff across Canada, and they can't answer questions. Could you just build them a nice tool so that when a customer goes up to a, a store associate and says, which stroller is the right one for my baby, they can look it up just like a customer could on their own phone. And Tulip really just started from that one single conversation. All Tulip does right now is we empower store associates um, with the best possible information on, on iOS software, right? Here's what people always talk about when they talk about the future of work and a post-job economy, um, or this, this, these kind of scary terms about disruption. Part of my talk, this is what I want to tell you in the next two minutes, is, is why I think a lot of this isn't true, right? I, I, I don't think that robots are going to replace all jobs, and let me, let me tell you why. This graph, which the numbers kind of got messed up on right now that I'm noticing, is probably, th this graph and the next graph are probably the, the things that I learned, driv drove everything that I learned the most about this, this, this last year. I had no idea. Did you know that retail sales associates and cashiers are the largest job in North America? That's like, that's like 45 million plus 33. There's a lot of people in North America that basically stand in front of a store and shop. But then look at this graph. This is the growth of service prov um, producing people in, in the economy and then people who actually make it manufacturing, right? So when my grandfather was a farmer, they've basically now gotten to the point where farming is like, you, you can do the same work as two people now with one person, but look at all of these jobs that get created. What's happening now, you can start seeing it, I don't have time to, to talk about this too much, but I want us to think about this, is what's happening is a whole bunch of people are selling the stuff that we now make much more efficiently, right? One of the conversations that, 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 that I've had recently with, with, with people is, I have a friend who's a radiologist, and he said, look, for the first time ever, I've been, I studied radiology my whole life, I'm, 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 this is all I've studied, I saw for the first time this, this AI that can look at every radiology screen ever, and for the first time ever, I saw the results that came out of it, and I'm telling you, that thing is better than me. That's so scary for a radiologist. But if you had to go to a radiologist right now, and they gave you two choices, they said, this robot's seen every slide ever before, and they're gonna spit out a printout that says yes, no to your surgery, or you get to talk to this other dude or, or, or woman who, who's actually gonna talk to you and help you, like, counsel you through the right procedure for you. It's, it, there's more to, to selling and, and doing work than just spitting out a result, right? And so part of the theme and the whole idea behind Tulip is that work isn't going away. I, the only thing I want you to learn, if you just learn one thing from this talk, is please stop saying post-job economy. Jobs aren't going away. They're just changing very much. And so the biggest thing that I've learned at Tulip, when we empower source associates, and I've been sitting with these folks every day, helping them do their jobs better, what I learned is that when you start automating the things that robots do really well, you get to focus on what humans do really well. And so I think the biggest opportunity for, for for us as technologists is to stop talking about 
How can we disrupt jobs and take them away from people and give them to robots? But what we can start talking about is when robots take away all the boring parts of jobs, now we get to be human again. What does it mean to be a great human at your job and how can we make humans great at the human part of what they do every day? I, I think the future of work is, is not actually about replacing people, it's about investing in them. And, and that's the biggest thing I learned last year. Questions? Hi, Ali. Hello. Hello. Over here. It's Bill Charters. Um, I think, you know, I agree with you that there's uh, purposes, obviously, for humans, but I don't think that jobs can be created as fast as they're going to be taken away by robotics. Does that not seem sensible? Yeah, I think, uh, like, from a quantitative perspective, Obviously, if I say jobs aren't going away, there's a whole bunch of people who are going to lose their jobs, and they'd be very offended by me w w by saying that. What I mean to say is, of course, a, a, a lot of individuals are going to lose their specific work, but the idea of the nature of work as no longer being a thing that humans do, that's not going away. Of course, we have a responsibility to figure out what happens to all those people whose jobs get displaced in, in, in a changing economy, but, but that's, I can't talk about that in five minutes. Hey, Ali, right here, right here. You're here, straight here. I see your voice everywhere. <laughs> so imagine this, okay? Everything has been automated five years fast forward. What's your day gonna look like? Remember, you said everything is gonna be automated, but my whole talk was about how everything is not gonna be automated. No, I, I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm telling you. So Tulip is here's, one, here's there'll be others that will co keep coming up. Let's imagine seven years, okay, down here's, the line. Here's my quick answer to that. What's, what is it about being human that we aren't so, today? So I, I'm not a technologist, so this is the product of me thinking about this on the plane ride for the last half an hour. Uh, but uh, I think, look, when, when I, I used to study visual arts, and when the first f photography came out, um, painters were like, what, what is the point of painting? I thought it was about capturing an image. And then all of a sudden, painters had to figure out what it meant to do painting in a world where just capturing an image was no longer possible. And you could not ask that question, what is painting gonna look like when people are able to take photographs? We literally had to experience that as humanity. And so I literally think, that our job as humans is to find a world and to live in a world where things that we thought were human get replaced and then we have to figure out collectively what it now means to be human and that will literally be the, like the product of humanity. I, you can't answer the question, we actually have to live it and that's scary. Um. Last question. So automating in retail is one thing, but is that your only focus? Is that your vision specific to retail? Or do you, th do you feel, I know, I know there's a bigger vision there, but what is your focus retail only? I, I guess that's the question. So the, the right answer, I think, like from a standard startup answer is we have to be laser focused on what we're doing right now. So Tulip's entire job is to win retail. We have customers like Toys R Us, Kate Spade, Coach, Saks Fifth Avenue, Lululemon, uh, Bonobos, and we're going to win a whole bunch more, and, and, and we want to win this category. But the company and our vision is to focus on something that could be a $100 billion plus market. And to do that, I think we have to think beyond retail. So Tulip's mission is focused on this idea that the very nature of work is changing and that every single worker, every frontline worker in the world is gonna have a mobile device in their hands as part of their job. And I think this, is, this could produce one of the largest uh, companies um, in technology. And hopefully it makes people better at what they do, not just replace people. Right?